Hello everyone and welcome to this last tutorial in how to use CMD's CMOS. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I use CMOS for my own personal research so that maybe you can guys can get you know inspired by some of the things uh, that I've been doing on a more advanced level of using CMOS. My research is on enhanced geothermal systems. Enhanced geothermal system is a geothermal system where you have hydraulic fracturing in order to enhance the permeability of the subsurface and get water flowing from injector wells to production wells quicker and uh, more efficiently. So what we have here is an injector well. And here we have some production wells and we have hydraulic fracture stages that go and connect between the injection to the production. And the general idea can be slightly better understood looking here at this diagram made using CMG's results platform. And that is injector, producer, hydraulic factor stages that connect between the two wells. Uh, what we see here is a uh, temperature field that is actually higher around what is a higher permeability zone uh, that is a natural fault. And the cold water is injected through the injector and it heats up as it gets to the production well, which produces hot water. Now, one of the great things about uh, using CMOS is that you can program a lot of different values and parameters that will help you explore different configuration of wells, different um, hydraulic fracture um, geometries, and so on. So for example, right here we can see uh, a configuration where the well length is 550 meters long in this uh, setup, and here it is 800 meters long, and here it's even longer, 950 meters long. Now that natural fault, which has the higher temperature around it, can you can either intersect it at the edge on the left, or you can intersect it right, have your wells intersect it such that it is in the middle, or you can try to keep your wells to be uh, to the left of the natural fault and try to not intersect it as much. And all these variations, you might think to yourself, oh, I have to create many different data sets by hand. But no, you can do this programmatically using CMOS. One other thing before I go on to show you how you can do it programmatically is to look here again at this diagram. We can see here the different fractures uh, that I created can have different lengths and different uh, permeabilities as well. And you can also do that within CMOS. If you want your fractures to not all have the same length, the same aperture, the same height, you can do that and, and create this heterogeneity and then you can study how this heterogeneity uh, affects your results. So one way to, I will now go on to show you how to do that. Uh, before I go into CMOS, let's look again at the parameter file. This is something that was created by CMOS automatically. And if we go here to wells, and then go to hydraulic fracturing, uh, which we just discussed. Uh, what I programmed for CMOS is to make many different stages instead of making, because um, uh, every stage needs to have the same properties. So you can just make, if you want fractures of different properties, you can make many different stages. And each stage is going to have a different template, and you can create this automatically, which has different fracture width, which is impermeability, effective permeability, and so on. And that way you can create this heterogeneity in the fractures different porosities, etc. Another thing uh, that we uh, my, that we talked about was the temperature. Uh, so you can see here that the temperature field has this uh, kind of linear sweep. Um, and the way to do that is you can use uh, the formula manager and temperature. And here there is a somewhat of a complicated uh, equation, but you can also change this equation programmatically to change the width of the hot zone and the location of the hot zone uh, to fit with the zone where you have a natural fault uh, put in. So let us go to CMOS and see how that is done. And basically here you're not going to see that many parameters I have varying because most of my varying parameters I'm actually varying inside of this formula. And this formula is very long, right? So like a basic formula, it would, would be like, you know, two lines. This one has 1,200 lines. Most of it is just, you know, copy paste. But I have here different functions to give me random variations of the layers up, layers down, uh, the temperature width, all these are varied randomly. And the way I keep track of all these numbers is uh, using JavaScript, you can actually get to do some pretty complicated equations here for making your data set file. 
Um, of course, you can also do this outside of CMOS, but CMOS may, makes it somewhat easier. Uh, so you go here, you can make a file, and then you can write out your results to file, which you can then use for later analysis. So the main answer here is that if you want to do some very lot of parameters, you just got a good, you can either do this in Python or in JavaScript, and you can make some fairly complicated changes in uh, the input file. Next thing I wanted to show is that let's let's say you want to do some analysis outside of the CMOS framework. You can go here, and this is your table, and you can just export it to Excel. And then you got this table in Excel, and you can do some more analysis on that on your own. Uh, also, if you want to output these uh, this observer data, for example, here I, I'm going to output the, the downhole temperature, uh, and we can see that there's a lot of different values. I can go here and, and click on data, and then I can output all of these lines. And then I can do some additional analysis that is beyond uh, CMOS in uh, some other softwares. So I'll just show you some of the things that I've done and maybe can give you ideas of what, about what you can do. Uh, so we have here that I've shown you a very fancy MPV function with an efficiency uh, for temperature that I added within Excel. Uh, using different sheets. Uh, these are just some solutions which you might recognize from other CMS tutorials. Here we can see the optimal solution, basically almost a, an output uh, out of CMOS uh, and, and uh, some histograms, the P10, P50, P90, um, just replotted. Here I've done some additional analysis in the, in the, func in the software R, uh, which shows me a distance-based generalized sensitivity analysis and the cumulative distribution functions. Um, and here are, are some functions that show the distribution uh, conditions and different parameters, uh, which uh, are useful for determining what are the ideal parameters uh, for different setups. And as you can see, you can make a lot of really nice plots by uh, exporting the data and using it in MATLAB or your software of uh, your choice. Uh, box plots, everything. Okay, so that is, um, I'm going to go and end here. This is what we want, right, to optimize our, our situation uh, given uncertainty, which was the topic of this work. Okay, so actually one last thing before I'm done, and that is the importance of high-performance computing for all this to work. Uh, each one of these runs, because it has so many fractures and because there's a large uh, temperature differential, it actually takes a long time to run. It can be several hours. Uh, you can imagine if you're running this on a uh, single computer, then it would take a long time, several weeks perhaps, and this, just to get the results, and then you would debug, and then several weeks again. And that's why high-performance computing is super important for all of this uh, to work out. And CMG has been uh, at the front of doing things about uh, uh, connecting users to high-performance computing. And you can see that over here, if you go to engine settings, I believe, or simulation settings, uh, there are different options here for connecting to the cloud. Uh, I connected to one of CMG's cloud and it made, uh, made it possible for me to get results in a timely fashion. And it is, uh, it's a game changer, the ability to run many simulations. Because uh, in my work, I look at the question of you know, how do you optimize when there's a lot of different uncertainty in the subsurface, not only in your optimization parameters? Uh, and for, to be able to do that, you have to be able to run a lot of realizations, which is only uh, a possibility when you have a lot of computation power. So the access to the computation power is, is a game changer in this regard. Okay, well, again, I would like to thank you guys all for listening. I would like to thank CMD for writing the software and assistance and computation time and uh as always i hope you guys have the best of luck with all of your um simulation projects <laughs>